Those images of John and Jacqueline Kennedy just hours before his assassination are ingrained in our memories. Today marks the 28th anniversary of that fateful day, a day few of us will ever be able to forget. It appears as though something has happened in the motorcade group. It was definitely the president's car. President Kennedy has been given a blood transfusion in an effort to save his life. November 22nd, 1963. 28 years ago today, the day JFK died, the day a part of all of us died, the day America will never forget. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. Well, it was probably one of the biggest tragedies in my lifetime. I was four or five years old. My mother became very, very upset, and I knew that something horrible had happened. Just cried and cried and cried and cried. It was, a, it was like a personal loss. My husband was saying, you know, is the world gone to pieces? Are people crazy? What's happened? I guess the Kennedy themselves is just magic. That's all I can tell you is magic. On this day, we lost a president as well as our innocence. Camelot was gone. Anybody here see my old friend John? Can you tell me where he's gone? Why now, 28 years later, are we still obsessed with John F. Kennedy's death? Next month, Oliver Stone premieres his new movie about the greatest unsolved mystery of our time. Why is it that we can't forget the leader we could have had and the family he left behind? That day and those images will remain forever in our minds, but for Gene Hill, the closest eyewitness to JFK's assassination, the last 28 years have been a nightmare that almost drove her to suicide. She is the famous woman in red, as they say, who was so close to the motorcade that she saw the president being shot while blood splattered all around her. She recently relived that scene when she became a technical advisor for Oliver Stone's film, JFK, which stars Kevin Costner. Take us back there 28 years ago, Gene, if you could. Oh, I can. I, I bet you can. Every day you... Every day. I can take you back. Um, on that day, my friend Mary Mormon and I had gone downtown to see the president, but also to look at some policemen that we thought were pretty interesting. And... <laughs> you had a, a policeman who was a friend. Right, and he was riding on Kennedy's wheel in the motorcade. And... Uh, we wanted to get some pictures of him, too, uh, little knowing what we were going to see. Uh, but our first impetus was that we get close enough to the uh, motorcade that the policeman could see us. Right. And we started on the, the uh, side of the street, just in front of the school book depository, and there were so many people coming in, and it was getting so crowded you know, we were afraid we weren't going to be seen. So you went across to the other side well, of the street? we tried, and a policeman stopped us. And I kind of flirted with him, and... Gene, you have that ability. Well, then... This must be the uniforms you like, huh? Then. <laughs> but he finally decided he'd let us go, and he wouldn't let anybody else go. And we were in the triangle uh, between two streets, just across from the grassy knoll. And there was no one over there, so we walked up and down for about 20 minutes to find the most advantageous spot. Here comes the motorcade. Uh, it was just, we got caught up in it, and I dashed out to the edge of the street, and I started to touch the car, and, and you just don't do things like that. And I yelled, hey, Mr. President. And your friend had a, had a, uh, Polaroid. Had a Polaroid uh -huh. camera, and she wanted to take pictures. Right. So when you yelled to the president, hey, Mr. President, we're over here. Yeah. He, she's taking pictures. She's taking pictures. And then what happened? And just as he started to turn and look at me, and his hand came up, I thought to wave, and all of a sudden the shots ring out, and he grabbed his throat. And it was just horrible. There was a series of shots, and I saw this flash of light in the puff of smoke from the knoll uh, in front of us. 
where, by the way, the Warren Commission says nothing ever took place. Oh, I saw it. You saw that puff of smoke. Oh, I did. You know something happened I at the I know mall. someone was shooting from there. How far would you say you were from that car? Oh, at one time I could have touched the car. When it happened, how far were you? I had jumped back up on the curb just a little further than I am from you. You were this close to the president? Yes. Oh, yes. Too close. This happens, you hear the shots, and you see what, a man? I, no, I, I just saw the smoke and the light from the nowhere. where I knew someone had shot. Right. And at that instant, his head was blown off. Right. And the blood and the brains and all this just made a red cloud around President Kennedy's head. And it, the blood and everything splattered my boyfriend's motorcycle. And it, it was just horrible. It, it was something you never forget. And I just saw this look in his eyes and, and his head was gone. And I'd never seen anybody killed before and haven't since, but I knew, I mean, you can't live through something like that. It was just... And then you saw a man. Yes, I saw running. a man. Well, you've got to realize that it was like a freeze frame in TV. Uh, no, nothing was moving. Everything was so still. It's like, well, we were all in shock. It was such a traumatic event. And I looked up and, and I saw this man right in front of me at the top of the hill. And he was walking very fast back to where I had seen the gun, seen someone shooting. And I thought, he's getting away. And, and there were so many, the shots were ringing at us. I said at least four to six. Right. And the Warren Commission says no, no more than three. No, no more than three. And when I, I'd, I'd heard that many, but I thought it was just the good guys and the bad guys shooting back. And I thought, you must be a bad guy because you're running away. Right. And we're not. And I thought, I've got to catch him. Somebody's got to catch him. So you ran up. I ran across the motorcade and ran up on the hill, back into the parking lot looking for him. And when I got up there, a man grabbed me from behind on my shoulder in a, an extremely painful grip and uh, said, you're coming with me. And I said, I can't. I've got to catch this man. Help me. And he had shown me some ID, Secret Service. He Did said, he say Secret Service? Yes, sir. And in fact, there was no Secret Service agent in that whole area except on the motorcade. That's you what I've that? been told later. Yeah. Uh -huh. But at that time... I just want to, just want to say what's been said. Yeah. There was no Secret no. Service agent in that area if it wasn't on the motorcade itself. It wasn't right. on that car. Go ahead. Well, I jerked away from him twice. But about the time I jerked away the second time, another man came and grabbed this side. And they had me held, and it was so painful. And back in those days, you didn't run your hands in a woman's pocket. And he just said, I want your pictures. And I said, I How don't... How did he know you had pictures? I don't know. And I told him I didn't have you any. Would have, you had taken the pictures that your girlfriend took and put them in your pocket. Yes, I was coating you, them with a fixative. You had to right. do it that time. I'm sure I remember yeah. this. Yeah. And I, I was putting them in my pocket so we could keep shooting. And he wanted them. And I said, I don't have any. And he just ran his hand in the correct pocket and came up with my pictures and so grabbed them. So it looks them. like he was watching the whole time. What you, that's what you're like inferring. It. It. Sounds like that, it. Through that entire scene, he was watching you waving to the president, catching his attention. Oh. Your, your girlfriend takes the pictures, and there's somebody watching Somebody's you at all Somebody's watching. They take the pictures, and then what happens? Because we have to They trundled me very fast over to, and they told me to walk and act as though we were your boyfriends, and they had their arms up around me because they were holding my shoulders. And they told me to smile, and of course I was hurting so bad, I told them I couldn't. And they took me in to this place in the records building, courts building, and up on about the fourth floor, and they just opened a door and shoved me in there and there were these men sitting there at a table over uh, at a window overlooking it was like a theater seat you could see the whole thing the whole assassination site we'll be back in a minute and meet a man who says america's obsession with kennedy's death will never be put to rest until the truth is out gene hill's been telling her truth to us today